Okay, we will uh, continue with Claudia. Uh, we are quite excited because we will launch our uh, year long uh, Q course. Uh, it will be more like Q class, not only introductory materials will be covered. Also, there will be several other things. Uh, I remember Claudia joined us two years ago, maybe. And uh, now she's, uh, I mean, she's one of the really hardworking members. And now she's, uh, let's say, coordinating this uh, year long program. Claudia, state is yours. Thank you. Well, as mentioned, I'm Claudia Sendejas Morales. And I am going to talk about this new uh, course that we are preparing at QBOR. This course is being planned to have a longer duration compared to previous courses that have been given. At this time, we will have a course uh, with a duration of one year, so we can cover more activities. Uh, well, the goal of QWORLD is having an open source global ecosystem for quantum technologies and quantum software. So by keeping that in mind, we seek to create resources that allow anyone who wishes to be able to get involved in the ecosystem uh, for quantum technology. And a very concrete way is by carrying out online courses. What we have today? Well, today we are in the era of noisy intermediate scale quantum computers or NIST computers, which means that one of the biggest problems that current quantum computers suffer from is noise and the coherence. However, this doesn't stop the community from solving problems and make progress. Uh, since clever algorithm designers have been able to generate ways in which, despite these aforementioned problems, it is possible to make use of these devices. There are many efforts on many fronts, creating software that facilitates the use of quantum computers, as well as their simulation, including access to real devices, for example, Qiskit or Silk, that we will use in this course. But to use all of these, one must understand the fundamentals on how things work uh, or how the science behind these technologies is being used. Uh, it is a good idea to be aware of the diversity of packages that, the, uh, that exist and mainly to learn how to use them. Uh, to meet its goal, who work holds various types of events, such as this one, the Quantum Science Days, as well as workshops as it's already mentioned that cover different levels of knowledge and have been taught around the world. Uh, we also have the cousins that are groups willing to popularize quantum technologies and to involve more people uh, by working locally and internationally. Another way is the QInter program, which was already described in the previous talk, and right now is accepting applications as already mentioned. So a new Q course is being built with the aim of attracting people with no previous knowledge that will cover from the necessary basis to, to start studying quantum computing until reach the study of various quantum algorithms and more advanced topics also. It's okay to want to learn something new and not have previous knowledge. This can always be acquired. Uh, another possible situation is that the knowledge is rusty, so it is always a good time to resume what challenges are mine. This course will begin with the necessary mathematics, which includes linear algebra, and will review concepts that are used in quantum computing. Uh, we will learn programming in Python, which includes essential flow structure, definition of functions, methods, classes, all this to be able to write code when programming quantum computing simulations and understand, of course, the open source code that already exists. We will also review basic concepts of quantum mechanics so that when they are used in the context of quantum computing, one has an idea of why they are helpful. We are going to go through the concepts of a classical probabilistic system to give way to the quantum counterpart by getting started with simple example like tossing a coin. Of course, we will talk about the basic concepts in quantum computing, the elements of quantum circuits, the different gates that allow us to modify the quantum state of a qubit. We will start with real value qubits, 
so that the states can be visualized in the unit circle. We will talk about the different rotations uh, about quantum tomography, as well as entanglement and quantum protocols such as teleportation. Then we will move to complex value qubits and use the block sphere for visualizations. Uh, we will also address quantum algorithms, such as the Grover search algorithm, which is used for on a structure search. Uh, it finds with high probability the single input uh, to a black box function. Also, we will use it to solve the Maxwell problem. The Deutsch-Josa algorithm is one of the first examples of a quantum algorithm that is exponentially faster than a possible deterministic classical algorithm. Also, the Bernstein-Basirani algorithm, which tries to learn a string encoded into a function. Uh, the Simon algorithm, which is a precursor to Shor's algorithm. Um, well, this algorithm was designed to solve a particular mathematical problem. And of course, the Shor's algorithm, probably one of the most famous quantum algorithms, and it is used for finding different factors of an integer. For the study of this particular algorithm, other concepts are needed that we will also address in the course, such as the quantum forest transform and the quantum phase estimation. To learn about more advanced topics, we will have self-study models. For example, this could include topics, uh, quantum error correction, since we are in the NIST era, topological quantum computing, which is another way of approaching the implementation of the qubits. Uh, here, the information is encoded not in the quasi-particles themselves, but in the manner in which they, they interact and are created. The quantum qubit distribution, to learn more about the cryptographic protocols in Bulletin and, and the quantum annealing, which is another way of doing quantum computing different from the quantum gate model, among others. The course uh, will include other activities that will serve as a complement to the students. For example, there could be online talks and panels, coding challenges, development of quantum games, hackathons, jams, among other activities. The idea is to learn in different ways. The outline of the course will include lectures where the topics will be explained, uh, labs, homeworks, so that the, student, the students can practice the concepts, uh, exams, uh, self-study models from which the students can choose which models they want to study. Um, the way in which notes and exercises are delivered is through Jupyter notebooks. In this manner, the students can consult the description, uh, the code and the output of the executions are all at the same time. These notebooks can be run on each student's computer locally, or they will have the option to access them through Google Colab which will avoid issues with local software installations. Uh, although we call it a year-long course, it will actually consist of three courses, which must be taken in the indicated order, um, and a certificate will be provided for each completed course, which will endorse the effort of the students as they progress. Onwards and exams, will be used to obtain a grade, which will have a total of 100 points. It is important to mention that each course will be graded separately. The students will have two weeks to finish a homework or an exam. And there will not be two things to do at the same time. And well, more details will be announced when the call is published. This course will begin in September of this year. And it is projected that it will end in May 2024. Uh, stay tuned to the social networks of QWORD to know the publication of the course. Oh, and it is very important to mention that the whole course materials will be open source and freely available, just as the content of the workshops taught by QWORD uh, is already public. To access it, you can go to the QWORD GitLab account.
I will thank you very much for your attention. Uh, here are the different links to the World Social Networks once again. Um, thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, is there any question? Yeah, good question. How many hours is it expected to take per week? Per week? Well, it's, it's depending on your previous knowledge. And also, maybe we can um, speculate that four or five hours per week. Okay, for four hours, let's say, for standard students. Uh, when will this course start? Uh, another question, when will this course start? I think you said September already. Uh, do they have other languages than English, like Spanish? Uh, is that a question for me? The, about the yes, yes, there are questions for you. <laughs> uh, I thought they were talking about the quantum Latin, I think. No, well, all the material is in English. <laughs> uh, um, the courses and everything that is published in the Zoom Club. Uh, there might be some uh, mentoring in other language, but it's uh, still not clear. Uh, registration. Uh, Probably will open um, before July, let's say. We agree, Claudia. Yes. Will there be a graduate level courses? Uh, I think call, call, uh, all three, we share three like undergrad course, their combination will be single graduate level course. Uh, we already uh, delivered two graduate level course. And uh, it also requires around 10 hours per week and people really uh, couldn't find time because they already have their own courses. So finally they can go smoothly, but of course it can take uh, longer. Uh, 